I really want to drink this tea, but it's so hot. Like I can't, even, I can't even pick up the cup. It's so hot. Blow on it. Blow on the cup. Yeah. I I can't pick it up. Like I gotta go down to it. I guess. <laughs> you gonna go down and blow on it. <laughs> this go is what down. happens when go you lead the guys up. on the podcast only. Like this is going to turn. This is uh, this is just this we is can going say to stuff like this though because now we're not worried about HR. <laughs> <laughs> we can get as dirty as we want. I can't remember the last time this I've released an episode where the explicit was not on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but usually when I say something explicit, one of the ladies yells at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of these episodes going to turn XX really quick. Harley's doing a dangerous thing, leaving us boys unattended. Yep. This is the Always More Podcast. March 27th, and welcome to the Always More Podcast, where we believe there's always more room at the table for honest questions, meaningful conversations, and deeper understanding. Today on the pod, we are talking about the fall of TikTok, depressive wrestling, Spanish anime, solo leveling, and so much more. But first, I am your host, Tim Lichty, and sitting next to me is my best friend in the whole entire world, Christopher Thomas Ford. Yo, yo. And joining us from the cold, wet, and uh, snowy lands, apparently, it is our good friend, Justin. Yo, not snowy yet. Give it, like, five hours. I'm not... Snowstorm, it's incoming. It's coming. It is coming. Yeah, it's coming. That's... (laughs) Oh, Lord, it's coming. We... Okay, so, obviously, as you can tell from both our voices and by... If you're watching us on YouTube... Uh, Harley and Tierra and Jordan are not with us, and which is a very dangerous combo to leave us guys unattended. Yeah, we've already established that like the censorship that I usually receive <laughs> is gone. Harley's not here to yell at me when I make crass jokes and statements. So... I would like to point out that Chris got a pretty good stern talking to by his wife before we started recording. A stern talking <laughs> to. Oh, really? What do you have to say? She said, I'm not allowed to make jokes on, <laughs> on the podcast anymore. That's not what she said. <laughs> that is word for word what she said. It's not what she meant, but it's what she said. <laughs> it's not what she, yeah, it's not what she meant. <laughs> But we're here. We are alive. Uh, is everyone good? Is everyone, you know, you know, we're all fine here. How are you? You know, I'm okay. <laughs> it's been two weeks. It's been two weeks. Yeah, it's been, the, the train it's been a month for me. Running. Two weeks. What was that? That it's been a month for me. You know, I missed the last episode. Cause, yeah. Uh, you know, because you're an conference. adult. Yeah, yeah, no, wait, I would like to pause here. If I'm not mistaken, you sent us a picture from like a bar or something when we were recording. Him and his IPA. Yeah. It was, yes, I was. It was a concert okay. that was in a bar. Okay, so what the hell? Hey, my girlfriend bought tickets for that back in October, maybe. What concert was it? It was this band called The Wildlife. Nice. Um, they're from uh, Nashville. Like an indie pop rock band, pretty good, pretty good. Um, they opened for the band Camino, which is my girlfriend's oh, favorite. Oh, I know them. Yeah, cool. Um, and I was like, I just want to see the Wildlife, and then we were late, mm. and I only saw the Wildlife's last song. Oh no! Which <laughs> I was like, I song's okay, it's fine, it's really popular. Not my favorite, but it's whatever. That's genuine. So she got me tickets as an apology. So we went. Um, and we're not very late. Well, we were a little, but we weren't as late this time. It was in <laughs> Madison, which is like an hour from her. So we hit some traffic. There was like an accident and just didn't mess up everything. So, you know. Fair enough. But it was good. It was a good show. It was, it was worthwhile. That's good. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. I did. At the cost of our podcast, but you know, whatever. It's fine. It's okay. You know. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> you do I'll, never, I'll never leave you guys again. All right. Don't make promises you can't keep. Don't don't give us hope. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do that. Hey, I'll call in from, from my car, from a job site. <laughs> there you go. I'll do it. Dude, that would be hilarious, actually. <laughs> Just tell your clients, like, hey, hold on. This is important. 
Hey guys, it's Justin from the All <laughs> Smoke Podcast. Just put the phone in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> you actually don't even have to talk. You can just send us like the or join the Zoom call, and we can just watch you working through the, through the whole podcast. That would be funny. <laughs> Man, it's some days. It's it's boring. Like tomorrow, I'm just our audio guy for the show we're doing tomorrow. He's uh just had some surgery, so he can't do a lot like movement wise. Um, so I'm there in case things go wrong. And I need to move places to do things that he can't do. Mm. And I just hang out, get paid, time and a half. It'll be nice. That is nice. Okay. Yeah. All have right, you, guys. Have you tried that tea yet? I have not yet. It's still really hot. All right. I will, though. She's waiting. Okay. Uh, it is time to move our show along, guys. We got a good show for y'all today. Like I said, we got a lot of good, fun, interesting stuff to talk about. So let's just dive right in. It's time for our our uh, our main staple of our show here, and that is a little Wreck and Rev. This is the part of the show where we like to recommend and review some things that you may or may not have heard of. And so, Justin, you're going first, sir. All right. Okay. Since uh, Chris tried to spoil this before we started, let's jump in. Just a little bit. All right. My recommendation for this week is solo leveling it mm. is such a solid show it's very good it's very good um and from what i all, understand a better manga so i've heard but i'm not going to take the time to start another one nor that's am going I. to consume my life nor am i <laughs> um yeah so first of all the animation is just gorgeous excellent excellent top tier high quality especially in an age where we've been getting some uh half-assed animations lately where it's like man your action scene you just drew a bunch of lines on the screen and yep made the camera shake a little no so we're actually getting good animation this time around which i i love uh basic premise of the show is you've got this guy he is uh affectionately called by his peers the like weakest uh hero whatever hunter hunter yep there you go that's the word um so this, this world is like a modern day japan but then there's like these magic gates start opening and there's monsters and there's dungeons and people get powers and have to go in and clear these dungeons and they do it for money because capitalism, right? Of course. Um, and so this guy, he does it for money because his mom has this sickness that also showed up with the gates where she's just forever unconscious. And so he's doing these things. He's always getting hurt. Um, and they go do this weak gate that has his path and they go down it and surprise, there's these horrible, 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 evil things. And a lot of them die. And he doesn't. He gets some weird, mysterious ability that allows him to level up. It's the title, solo level up. Hmm. Um, and there's a lot of hints that it's not normal. Like, sometimes uh, hunters will get what's called a second awakening, where they'll get new, better powers. And But his powers don't measure. There's a whole lot of mystery there as to what, what he re- the character refers to as the system. Like, what it is, where it comes from, why it's giving him his power. It has some, uh, it has its own goals that we've seen teased, but overall drama's great. Action's great. Wonderful dis- depiction of PTSD. Let me tell you. Mm, yeah. Um, Cause, uh, no joke. Yeah. Like watching everybody around you die and then you make it out by sheer luck. Mm. It's like, it's great. Like even like people who are like super powerful, high up have trauma and I love quality depictions of trauma, you know? being surrounded by therapists in real life. He's like, hey, let's let's show it. Yeah. Yeah, so one of my favorite things about that show is that the whole leveling system for him is essentially like a video game. So, like, he gets quests, yeah. and he has to, like, complete these different quests, and if he doesn't, there's a penalty. If he does, he gets rewards. And he's essentially just playing real life like a video game. I've always thought that would be a really cool situation. Like, if I had an edit character screen for my own life, like, skill points I could use. And it, it's pretty much what I would do with mine. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. One of these days, I'll start watching an anime, and who knows, maybe it'll be that one. Well, it makes maybe. me want to change my wreck and rev. Well, he kind of already... Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I'm going to go next here. Uh, I have a movie that I watched about a week or two ago. It's called The Iron Claw. And I got to tell you guys, um, I have nothing against the world of WWE or wrestling, but it's just one of those things that doesn't float my boat, if that makes sense. I just, 
It's not for me. Doesn't paddle your canoe? It does not. I don't mind it. I don't care for it. It just does not interest me in the doesn't least. Doesn't lace your sneakers? No, it does not. Um, it, it's one of those things to where it's like, I know that entertainment in general is quote unquote rigged or like fake or whatever. But like to me, when you mix a sport with it, it just is not that. It's like it's like the globe trotters. Like that does not interest me either. Or like what, what you're is saying, it doesn't oil your chain. <laughs> No. Or what's like the new bananas like baseball group? Is that what they're called? Something bananas? Yeah. Yeah. It just it just doesn't. And so but anyways, this movie, um It doesn't it, swing your bat. <laughs> it doesn't Anne your Hathaway. It doesn't pour your coffee. It doesn't sound check your mic. It's a tr- <laughs> It's a true story of the inseparable <laughs> Vaughn Eric brothers who made history in the intensely competitive world of professional wrestling in the early 1980s. Through tragedy and triumph under the shadow of their domineering father and coach, the brothers seek larger than life immortality on the biggest stage in sports, which I don't think that really is, but I don't um, think so. <laughs> Maybe like physically the biggest stage. <laughs> but no. Uh, it's directed by Sean Durkin. It's got uh, stars like Zac Efron, uh, Lily James, and uh, our guy, uh, what's his name from Chef, uh, Jimmy Jimmy Allen White. Uh, the, sh- the movie is just fantastic. It's incredibly well made. It is incredibly depressing as well, uh, which I think is a trend that I'm starting to realize about myself as well. I like tragic movies. You're just now starting to realize that? I've been trying to point that out for <laughs> years, dude. <laughs> But it's it's really good. It's it's one of those films that it's really about this big brotherly bond throughout the whole film and about, you know, how do you deal with loss within family and how do you deal with loss with with people around you and also trying to impress other family members and how to let go of other people's expectations. Um, so the movie is fantastic. I really uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, and they do also kind of like immediately in the first like 10 minutes kind of play on that trope of like, well, isn't wrestling just fake? And they kind of the way they explain it is very at least to me, it kind of, I'm still not interested in it, but at least kind of gave me like a resolute of resolution of why it is the way it is. And so, yeah, the iron claw highly recommend it. You know, other than the fact that it's depressing, I might check it out. <laughs> I don't like, you're not here for a uh, depressing. I don't like things that make me sad. I'm sorry. It's a sad movie, <laughs> but it's a sad movie, <laughs> but I will say my tastes are changing. Okay. And that's going to be made evident by my Wreck and Rev. But Ooh. Oh, before you get to that, though, sad things are not not typically what I like. But Zach Efron, my god, like it's like one of those it's like when it's like when Heath Ledger came out as the Joker. Like it was just one of those mm. things to where it's like okay, he's actually a really good actor. Like obviously Excuse me. <laughs> are you saying it took you until Dark Knight to understand that Heath Ledger was a good actor? No, but it definitely stood out as a like a pedestal of like this is what he has to offer, and it, the film itself wrapped around it gave him the opportunity to showcase himself. Sure, okay, that's what I mean. And this is I'll, the same. I'll way. allow it. Yeah. I'll so like Zach Alf- Efron, I don't personally, I haven't watched a lot of his films, but like what he's known for from High School Middle School and what was um what was the Beach movie? Uh, ah, Baywatch. 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 That's it. Yeah. Like, obviously, you're not going to get a, a high-quality, you know, performance necessarily out of something like that. But this one, it really did showcase just he how did good he is. really well in the Ted Bundy movie. Oh, that's right. I never forgot about that. He was good in that, too. Yeah. So, anyways. But, yeah. Highly recommend. All right. What you got, Chris? So, mine is actually three recommendations in one because they are part of a new category of stuff. Like I said, my tastes are changing. I have started watching short form horror movies on YouTube Mm -hmm. where it's like five to 15 minutes worth of a horror storyline. And I always, I always tell you guys, like I, I'm not a fan of horror movies. I don't like being scared. I do not mess with ghosts and demons. However, these short stories have gotten to me. Mm. They get me. So the first one is called Portrait of God. It's about a woman that is writing a speech and she starts performing the speech to prepare for a TED talk or a college lecture or something about a 
painting that is essentially just a black canvas that some people say they see the image of God in. And she doesn't see it at first. And then about halfway through her speech, uh, through practicing her speech, she starts to see it. Mm. But it is it is not the God that you hope to see. Oh, no. So that's it's a really intense short film. You should check that one out. Second one is The Other Side of the Box. This dude gets a Christmas present from a... F- I don't know if they're still friends or if they used to be friends or whatever, but you can tell there's tension between the two of them. Yeah. And the guy hands him a box and then runs out of his house and he's just like, I'm sorry, and he leaves. So the main character of the short film opens up the box and it's like a black void. Hmm. Like he shines a flashlight, can't see anything. He drops a pencil, doesn't hear it hit the bottom. And he starts to put his hand in, but his girlfriend comes out and stops him. And they pull the card that his friend left with him that says you have to keep your eyes on the box or it will get out. And when they look back at the box, it's like a man's head from the eyes up just staring at them from the box. And then they turn their heads to talk to each other and they look back and now he's a little bit further out of the box and his hands are like on the edge of the box. (laughs) But every time they look at him, he freezes. Like he can't move when he's being looked at. And the rest of the movie is just them reacting to that and trying to uh, trying to figure out what's going on and survive the situation. And that one gets really creepy as well. So like a weeping exactly angel. Exactly what I was yes. thinking. <laughs> yes, but definitely human-shaped. And it's really creepy. It gets worse as time goes on. Wait, so like, do you see a human or is it like shadowed? No, it's a human. Okay. Like it looks like just a weird, creepy guy. Yeah, yeah. Like some dude you would see at a gas station at 5 a.m. Okay. But wet. Hmm. He's like wet. Like it had been raining on some dude at a gas station at 5 a.m. Anyway, uh, last one is called Play Me, which is about a woman that wakes up in her car and there's a person shaped person thing, maybe? Question mark? In the back seat with a bag over its head, uh, like you would expect a kidnap victim to be. And she, like, she's looking around. She's trying to figure out what's going on. That person is also unconscious, apparently. And she finds a tape recorder that says, play me. And it's her voice on the tape recorder telling her that if she finds this and she doesn't know what's happening, containment has failed. The thing in the back seat is not a person, and she needs to kill it immediately. Ooh. And then she turns around. That's she, not obvious at all. She turns around, and the thing starts talking to her. And he's like, hey, don't, I don't know what's going on, but this has happened before. I'm your brother. You're, you have a disease. It's some kind of mental thing we've been dealing with forever. You have these breaks in your psychosis, but I'm your brother. I'm not whatever you think I am. You are not a secret agent. This has happened before. There's a picture of us together in your back pocket. Just pull it out and look at it. And then it just goes from that point forward, and she's like, do I believe my own voice? Do I believe this random person that I don't know in the back seat? Do I kill him? Do I let him go? Do I let him help me like he says he wants to? And it's a really intense, like, 10, 15-minute yeah. short story. So, Dude, that, that kind of stuff is the most, like, the scariest part. Like, I, obviously, not, I'm not talking about just the horror genre, but, like, that whole principle or that mindset that conundrum of like entomology how do you know what exists outside your own mind yeah like how do you truly know because uh, everything is perception everything is about information and so if your brain is giving you mixed signals about what is true and what is reality then who's to say what reality actually is and so that, that, that to me is like a scary thought i have about myself like i that's like literally a worst nightmare for me I, my I, greatest I my greatest fear is alzheimer's i you saying and Same. De- getting I, dementia and Alzheimer's, like losing myself but still being alive is my greatest fear. Yeah, I don't like it at all. So watching that last one, that was the worst one for me. Yeah, not it, it wasn't even like super scary, but that got to me. Right. So I would suggest watching those three and then checking out some other short, uh, short form horror. Another one that I saw that I thought was really cool was like, I forget what it was called, but it's like the... Uh, the deep end or something like that. Hmm. Some kid finds a random swimming pool in his neighborhood 
in somebody else's backyard and jumps into it. But it was fenced off for a reason. Yeah. So, like, when he jumps in, it's actually a portal to the ocean in shark-infested waters. So every time he goes underwater, there's, like, a shark there. But every time he pops his head up, he's back in the swimming pool. But he can't get out of the pool either. Yeah. So, fun stuff. I kind of like that. I want to actually look, look that up. I, I like short stories because it's, like, it gets to the point. Like, I feel like it's, and I love movies. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I feel like it's such a risk to watch some movies because it's, like, I don't want to waste two hours of my life on something that I thought was going to be good but actually really sucked. But with short films, it's kind of like, I wasted 20 minutes. You know, I can yeah. live with that. And for for the ones I found, it's not even 20 minutes. They're, like I said, they're 5 to 15 tops. Yeah. I'm down for that. So. That's. That's cool. I like that a lot. It's really fun because I'm watching like three or four of them on my lunch break, and it's pretty great. Nice. All right, guys. Well, uh, that was great. Thank you for your recommendations, gentlemen. Uh, it's time to move the show along, and we're going to play a game that we've never played on this show before, but I've been seeing on TikTok everywhere, and I want to play it with you all. So today we're playing a game that I actually don't know the true title of it, but I'm calling it 100. We, this... didn't, we didn't really have a choice in this, did we? No. Cool. Why? You don't want to play no, I just don't know what it is. And oh, that's why we're all learning it together. In, you put it in the notes. I was like, all right, I guess we're doing this. Yes. Uh, right. This is a game where you've probably seen it on TikTok. Um, I can't remember the guys' names, but they um, it's uh, it's not the backyard dudes. It's um, our basement, whatever they're called. That's the other guy. Uh, base, basement yard gang, I think. Yeah, it's not them. It's the guy who actually like is a musical artist. I can't remember his name, but anyways. Um so essentially you come up with any word you want. Try not to make it too crazy, but like you come up with any word, like a, a noun. And the other person is trying to guess it. And they'll, they'll say like, for example, let's say my word is microphone. And Chris says um, water. I will give it a rating on zero to 100 on how close I think it is to my word. So in that case, I would probably say like five, like nowhere near close. And so let's say next word he says is stage. I would say something probably along the lines of like 90. That's really close. And so you were trying to get someone closer to you can, uh, as close as you can, to finally where they hit 100 and they get the actual word. So it's kind of like the game we played last time, but just a different way of going about it. Okay. Does that make sense? Hey, there's a, uh, I'm in tr- there's a game like that. It's called Contecto. It's like a, it's like a web or game. Like taboo like, is what hey, I was thinking. So you can literally display it. It gives you a new word yeah. every day. It's the exact same thing. I was thinking like taboo. Where, like, you get a word and you have to get people to guess your word without saying your word. Something or, like that. Or other words that relate to it. Yeah. I never played it, but sure. You have absolutely played Taboo. It's been a long time. Well, then we need to re-up, homie. Okay. All right, so the way I figure we could play this is uh, instead of us, like, trying to do teams or whatever, we can just, like... Guess account based on like who 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 we're paired up with in this certain round. So we'll each each have a round, and we'll just kind of see how fast it goes, I guess. So, Chris, I think this is a game that you will do well with. I'm gonna let you have the first word. Okay. And then Justin, would you like to pair up and try to guess the word? All right, Chris, give a word. Got it. I feel like you need to text it out for me here so I can see this. So, so that, I know so that you're you not know cheating. I'm not changing it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. No, it's got to be fair. Here. It's fair enough. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Hold then on. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, or if you're listening to audio, I guess you'll just have to figure it out too. Uh, but uh, is, is it a compound word okay? Um, Let me see what it is. Is and Justin going to guess it? It needs to be simple enough for him to guess it. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Okay. It's complex, but it's fine. All right. Justin, are you ready? Yeah. All right, go ahead, man. Audio. One. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> There's no sound involved in this thing at all. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Outer space. Oh, that's a good guess. Uh, 20. What? Tw- okay, you know, never mind. It's just, this is your round. I, I'm, dude, I don't, I don't even know where to go. No sound involved in it. Um, 
picture frame. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. 85. That's pretty, yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, you, you told me it was a compound word, so now my brain is yeah. feeling. You're going to have to edit out some of this um, into space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um all right, okay, so picture frames closed. Um photo album, that's two words. Uh motion picture, motion dash picture. Motion picture, um I would like say <laughs> seventy nine. Comic book. Um 97. Comic strip? I think you went too high. I might have gone too high. <laughs> well, no, comic strip, is, I would say. Okay, comic strip is 97. Let's say comic book is 95. Okay. You're looking at six here. Web comic? <laughs> you went the wrong. 80. <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> Newspaper. Mm, 83 <laughs> I like to phone a friend <laughs> Phone Tim I think at 10 we, we should stop it sure. We're at 8 Let, right now let's, let's keep trying Okay yeah. we're at 8 Um, Videotape uh, 72 Last guess Spider Man. <laughs> Honestly, ninety. <laughs> what was the word, Chris? Our words. Coloring book. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> vroom, vroom. It's just like a zoom back and forth with it. <laughs> My goal is always right. to never be guessed. <sighs> okay, for the sake of this game, I'm going to make mine not too hard, and I'm going to let Chris try to guess it. All right. All right. You ready for it? Text it to Justin. Oh, okay. Fair enough here. All right. Uh, I'm going to let you go because I will not change this. Uh, this will be an easy easy one for me. So go okay. ahead. Movies. Um, 10. Hmm. Computer. Five. Okay. Different direction. <laughs> uh. Ha! Huh. Car. That's a choice. <laughs> um, I don't know. Eight. <laughs> okay. Movies closer. Wait, can I can I give him a hint? Sure. Three down. Cause. Okay, so all the letters <laughs> that are in the word car are in the word. No, well, car, not plural. Well, I guess if you make it both plural. That's not going to help him. <laughs> I think they confused him too much. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 overthink it. Caribbeans, huh? <laughs> Caribbeans. Um, Caribbean. You know, I'll give it a thirty. Oh, it's not it's not plural, by the way. Okay, and probably not for the reason you're thinking, but I'll give it a thirty. All right. Um. Hmm. Uh, um. Casper. Twenty. Wow. Still, that's closer than computer. <laughs> um. Okay. Computer should have been like a negative yeah. twelve. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh. It's really hard to judge like where each one is like without knowing what the next word is like where you would judge massacres, it. or I guess massacre. Uh, I don't know. Fifteen. Wow, damn. That was Casper. We are not good at this. <laughs> no, we are not. Um, 
Uh, jeez. Shoes. I'll give it a 40. And I bet Justin can think of why I would rate it 40. But I'll give it a 40. Mm. Soccer? No, we're going back down. Uh, I'm going 30. Uh, okay. Cheerleaders. Fifth. No, actually, you know what? I'll give it a 55. How is it closer? To- <laughs> what are you, what are we doing right now? Um, You're on seven. And you got to hurry up. Sportscaster. I have, I have 56. So I'm getting closer. Ish. Um, I don't know. Um, senators. <laughs> Forty. <laughs> okay, not, not senators. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I don't like this because I know that I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, damn it, in just a minute. Um, you got two left, um, and we have about. Three seconds. Three roadies. Minutes. Huh? Roadies. Roadies? Yeah. Like like the people that travel with musicians? Yes. Uh eighty five. Oh. Um. Bass players. Uh ninety. Ah it's it's, it's you're, you're on the right track. But you got the one last guess. <laughs> um C A R. You really got him with that, Justin. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I know this isn't right, but lead singers. Clarinet. Clarinet. <laughs> ah. <laughs> C-A-R, yeah, that's in there. I was hoping the guitar would at least like be like, oh, music. Yeah, music. yeah. That's why when I said cheerleader, okay, well, marching band. Like, they, they're in the same vicinity. Like, I was trying to <laughs> do that. No, bro. <laughs> you said cheerleaders and shoes. Tap shoes. And like, Casper. Like, 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 I'm thinking, like, jazz musicians with the You said tips. Casper was the closest until I guessed cheerleaders. Well, because I didn't know where else I was going to go from there. <laughs> Casper does not play the clarinet, sir. <laughs> no, but I was like, I don't know. Does he? <laughs> Who knows? Hey Google, <laughs> what instrument does Casper play? Yeah, yeah, Google, okay. Google. All right, Justin, your turn. So far, both misses. Uh, by the way, the 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 podcast I was thinking think of was called the Friday Show. The Friday Show. The Friday Show. I and don't know who that is. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're on my side of TikTok, I guess. But yeah, definitely. Um. Uh, so, anyways, Justin, you got a word? Yeah. Who's guessing it? Me. Tim's gonna guess it. So text All it to right. me. All right, all right. Let's see. All right. Uh, ooh, not the right guy, but okay. <laughs> Wrong Chris? <laughs> Look, there should only uh, be one I'll, Chris in your phone book, and it should be me. Hey, it was almost Christian, not Chris. All right. Uh, shout out Christian Seibert, who will probably never hear this podcast, but, you know. <laughs> well, if he doesn't listen to this podcast, he doesn't deserve a shout out. Wow. Uh, he's been busy filming Star Wars content, so. Oh. oh. Yeah. Uh, he gets a pass. He gets interest. a pass. <laughs> he gets a pass. But yeah, also see, maybe forward would... this episode to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right, you all right Chris, word? I sent you the word. You got it? Uh, not yet. No, hold on. My internet's slow here. Stop. Oh, no, I just got it. All right. All right. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Microwave. Four? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, a plane. Plane? Yeah. Three? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so, okay. Um, 
fish. Let's go something living here. I'll give you a 15. I swear to God, if you give me some kind of like abstract idea, I'm going to throw something. It's not. Um, <laughs> it should be really easy to guess. Um, okay. You gave me something. Give me something higher with fish than you did with plane or microwave. I feel like your numbers are off a little bit, Justin. <laughs> Do you think that they should have been higher or the, lower? The second two should have been equal. I mean, that's fine. I'm not disturbed about that. Um, Okay. I have a reasoning that makes sense in the end. Okay. Um, okay. Um, ocean. Ah, you're not going in the right direction. Um, Damn. <laughs> no, no. You're really not. <laughs> it's going to be lower than fish. Oh, God. Some number lower than fish. <laughs> what? It? Oh well, no! <laughs> you know, we can tie it with fish. Yeah, there is I, I would, like in there. same level. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. God! Okay, equal to fish. Okay, I'm just going to start somewhere else because I'm not getting anywhere with this. That's um, fair. Let's go with uh, uh, let's go with scooter. One. God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh the damn hell! Hair. I will give you a 30. Why? Hat. Because. Oh, no. I, I think I see your I see your train of thought. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What did you, what did you just say, uh, say, Tim? Hat. Hat. Oh. We're going back down. Uh, mm -hmm. Somewhere around fish. Oh, my God. Um. Jesus Christ, comb. Probably nowhere near. You're going in the wrong direction. Real wrong. Real wrong. Oh God. Um, comb is gonna get 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 you a two. Okay, hair got me my highest number here, and I don't know how to feel about that. Um. Okay, I you're yeah. This is how many have you? How many have you guessed? I think five or six. Five. Um, okay. Um, if, mm, mm, garage. In my experience. Yeah, we can we can give garage. We can put it up there with hair, like at 30, mm -hmm. 35. Mm-hmm. In my experience, what the hell is that supposed to be? <laughs> Would you like to know, weather boy? <laughs> um, the truck. I feel like it would have been a lot higher if it was truck, but. Um, I'm gonna put truck back down in, in the in the twenties. Jesus. Oh man, what am I doing here? Um, house. I have no idea where to go from here. House will give you like a fifteen. Jesus, Put it back with fish. What? Is, uh, hair. Wait, garage. wait, wait. How many? How many are, are? Is that? Is that eight? That's seven. That's seven. Seven. Okay. Um. Oh my God. Door. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, light. You know what? Light bulb. I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm so lost Three, here. I feel two. like you're just guessing parts of the house, and that's. I'm just. Uh, garage was the highest one here, so what else am I supposed to do here? Um, <laughs> but it wasn't that high. Pavement. I give you a one point seven. I was gonna say, what did you give Ocean? <laughs> Jesus, I give Ocean. Ocean and Fish were both about a fifteen. Okay, so it's um, much was less. That, was that ocean. ten? Much less. That was, that nine. Uh, was nine. Last one. Um, I don't. know. Your best bet is to take a shot in the dark, dude. <laughs> I don't 
I tell you what. Um, the sun. You know what? It's a little higher. <laughs> a little higher than ocean. What the hell is it? <laughs> How do you know I'm going to put sun higher than ocean? It is whiskey. Oh, Wait, we're wait, 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 wait. I do not like what hair. You can puts look hair at it. in your chest. I was gonna say you can look at it as like puts hair on your chest. Oh, damn. You know, okay. or even the the one I had you try the other day, the red uh, red headed, what's her name? Uh, red headed Hellcat. Yes, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. And garage was. I drink it when I'm in the garage. That's no, like, that's I can, lame. That's, I don't like that. That's at where all. I keep my whiskey. <laughs> no, I want you to know that that was literally where my brain also went and was like, "Yeah, whiskey, whiskey in the garage." He was, yeah, yeah, my friends. All right, you Midwesterners. All right, let's. We're done with this. Oh my god, if we're going to do this again, excuse me, sir. Did you just call me a Midwesterner? <laughs> because first of all, how dare you? We're moving the show along, guys. <laughs> we are done with this segment. Uh, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we have some more interesting things to talk about. Uh, things like, um, I don't know, like the end of TikTok. Thank you all for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a rating on your favorite podcast platform and YouTube. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at at AlwaysMorePod. If you'd like to ask us a question for us to answer on the pod, you can email us at AlwaysMorePodcast at gmail.com. Or you can call us on our Always More hotline and leave a voicemail question at 254-218-4042. You can also follow all of our social medias individually and as the Always More podcast. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to it. I feel like you just edited out like that last 15 minutes of ranting and yelling at you I just did. Yeah. the best. Uh, Guys, we are back. Uh, We... (laughs) What uh, okay, I think I think I think we need to watch those videos more and we'll get some better practice. Or maybe we just suck at this game. I think we just suck at this I game. Just suck at this game. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I, it's I right. don't we ever learned something. Play this again. We learned something today. I feel like the girls will probably do better than we will. I don't know. Oh absolutely no. They're they're mm, actually I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like no offense to y'all. Do they listen to the episodes they're not on? I don't know. I don't know. They We're do. smarter than them. They do. We're not. <laughs> I'm smarter than them. You're not. A hundred percent. We're not. <laughs> I know I'm not. Guys, today we are uh, moving along from this conversation because I do not want to get in trouble. Uh, today we're talking about uh, social media. We're talking about the fall of TikTok, apparently. Uh, what a what a time to be alive. Uh, the rise, the very quick rise, and the almost maybe possible fall of one of the biggest social media uh, apps, websites you out there. You know what? I'm going to be the first one to say it. It's not falling. Well, hey, we're just not, right there we're, with you. as Americans are not going to be able to use it. That's it. Right. I guess you're right. But we're only ten yeah, percent of TikTok's user base. Do you understand that? No, I, I get you. I get you. One hundred and seventy million. Yeah. U.S. citizens are on TikTok, but and I wonder, we are literally ten percent of the user base of that website. But I wonder where most of the ad revenue comes from. That's what I'm curious about. I haven't actually looked into that. I should. I wonder how much of the... I would assume that it's pretty equal across the board, so the U.S. is probably only about 10% of the ad revenue. Mm. I'll have to figure that out. Well, anyways, before we get into all that, though, uh, let's... Uh, I, got, I got some fun stuff to talk about. I got some I got some trivia for you guys, and then I got some statistics because social media is definitely taking over the world in many good ways and in many bad ways. Uh, so, you guys ready for some trivia? It's another game. And you guys Being are your friend for all of these years, Tim, I'm always ready for trivia. All right, Justin, ready or not, here it comes. So here's some social media all trivia. Right. Uh, who is the co-founder of Facebook alongside Mark Zuckerberg? Is it Susan Lee, Eduardo Severin, or Javier Olivin? Olivin. Olivian? Olivin. Actually, I know this answer, so Justin, you go first. Oh. Eduardo? Chris? Eduardo. The correct answer is Eduardo. Good job, everyone. I mean, yeah. you guys watched, uh, um, what was it? The Yeah, The yep. Social Network. The so- yeah. Yeah. Man, it's a fantastic movie. It was all right. Um, In what year was Instagram launched? 2010, 2008, or 2006? I also know this answer. 
2008? 2010. It is 2010. Hmm. I, don't I was like, unsure. I don't. I don't like how you like. I don't like. I don't like how you know these answers so well. <laughs> hey, uh, you're just mad. I'm winning. All blend together for me. They're one big blur of. You're just for, mad. I'm I winning. Forget. Dude, I honestly do not remember. Like I know the dates because I've like researched be a little bit, guys, but like I do not remember. Like when did I, I? I don't think I got on Facebook till like 2012. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The only reason I know that is because one of the people I follow on YouTube sold his company to Instagram. For like fifty three million, and that's how he's able to travel the world. And I just in one of his videos, he did like a history of Instagram, and it was the year we graduated. Oh well, there you go. It, that for Wait. some reason always stuck with me. You graduated in twenty ten. Yeah, yeah, we both did. Tim and I graduated in twenty ten. You're old, Justin. Half dead. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, moving along. What does the acronym GIF stand for? Uh, in the context of online communication, graphics interchange format, graphics interconnect framework, or graphics immersion framework. Man, I'm killing the this first game. one. It, yeah, graphics interchange format. Good job, guys. You know what it is. Graphics interchange, which format. is why it's a it's hard G and not a soft G. It's GIF. not GIF. It's GIF. It's GIF. It's GIF. GIF. Graphics. G. G. <laughs> Graphic. <laughs> Graphics. <laughs> <laughs> In which year did Facebook pass 1 billion users? Ooh. 2007? This one I don't know. 2012 or 2017? 2017. I'm going to guess 2012. It is 2012. Ooh. What's up? Over two against Chris. <laughs> uh, In what year did LinkedIn, a platform professional networks, launch? 1999, oh. 2003, or 2007? Statistically, no statistically, the answer is B. Justin? I, I agree with him. You're both correct. 2003. Dope. All right. <laughs> Last but not least, which celebrity has the most Instagram followers? Kylie Jenner, Cristiano Ronaldo, or Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Kylie Jenner. I feel like I want to say Jenner, but is it Ronaldo? The correct answer is Ronaldo. Oh, no. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> He's wildly popular outside of America. I'm going to be honest with you guys. The reason I thought it was Kylie Jenner, boobs. <laughs> She's got um, But boobs. no, didn't she have the, other she had the most liked uh, photo on Instagram until the people made it like a potato or something? She did, and then that took over, and oh, then it, Messi's photo it, took over. Was it an egg, a potato, or something weird? Yeah, I think it was an egg. I think you're right. No, you're right. It was an egg. Yeah. Can this egg like surpass the, the amount of likes than Kylie Jenner's most popular photo? Something like that. I bet she was mad about that, too. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, uh, that was nice, short-lived uh, uh, trivia that you guys pretty much knew all the answers to. Audience, if you knew it, awesome. Congratulations. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> social media statistics that will kind of, I think, elevate our understanding of it today. In 2023, an estimated 4.9 billion people use social media across the world. That is a that's a wild number, considering that's that we have more what, than half of the global population. Do we have eight or nine billion? Or it's around? It's in the middle of between there, right? Yeah, it fluctuates. Yeah, so the number between seven and nine, it fluctuates. The number of social media users worldwide has swelled to a record 4.9 billion people globally. What's more, this number is expected to jump to approximately 5.85 billion users by 2027. Uh, these aren't users tied to a single platform either. The average user now spreads their digi digital footprint across a staggering six to seven platforms every month. I use, oh, I guess I could use quite a few. I think I use two, like at a time. Because for a while I was using Facebook and Instagram, and then I jumped to TikTok, so it was Facebook and TikTok. When I first started, it was MySpace and Zanga. Zanga. Man. What were those social medias as much as, like, do, do we want to call, are those, like, precursors to social media? Are, are blogs, are live journals? Or they, no. They're definitely social media. I don't think so. I think there has to be a level of back and forth communication, and blogs is usually primarily a one way street. Yeah, because like I would say, did you not MySpace... converse with your friends on Zanga? 
No, we like subtweeted them before subtweeting was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fair. Or like, like, like Tumblr, like reblogging things on Tumblr or adding them to your dash or whatever. But like like Reddit and Tumblr, like there's a comment section and you're like going like I don't know. I guess you could be right there, I guess. You, yeah, even you did Reddit that on is too. Reddit yeah. is Reddit's a weird one for me. Like I don't know is because I feel like it closer to like an old school forum. I was just going to say, I think Reddit's more like a forum than a social media. Cause you're not posting things about your life or like updating like you're, people. You're not like, you're anonymous or yeah. as anonymous as you want to be. I mean, I'm an, I'm anonymous on Reddit. I try not to. I have two different into accounts. I, I can't, I can't <laughs> bring myself to log into Reddit. <laughs> I use it quite a oh. bit. Actually. How do you think I find all my news? <laughs> yeah. Fair. <laughs> yeah. I've got, I've got a throwaway for, uh, when I want to post, I'm on Reddit like to my real maybe life. once Two, a week three. for like three minutes at a time. Four. I think I'm on Twitter more than five. I'm on Reddit, and I'm never on Twitter. I, I, I use um, I use five on a weekly basis, probably five or six. For yeah. me, looking, it's, at, looking it's, at my phone, TikTok is number one, Facebook number two. It would be Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, TikTok. Oh I no! Occasionally, look According, at Twitter. According to my screen time, I'm on Snapchat like three hours a day, seven days a week. But that's because I literally will like open it and hand it to my daughter because oh, she yeah. likes the filters. <laughs> mm. Interesting. That's, I don't even like I don't even know that I actually have a Snapchat. I think I just downloaded the app. <laughs> I see app. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest if you count that. Uh, nah. No. You don't count Pinterest as social media. Uh, Reddit, TikTok. What about, what about LinkedIn? I do have LinkedIn, but I don't use it. I use LinkedIn oh. every time I'm looking for a job. That's it. <laughs> I do keep my LinkedIn updated in case I need a hard and fast uh, career change. So, yeah. <laughs> Never know. Fair enough. Never know. All right. Um, moving along. And this is all from Forbes. I'll share the link in the description. Uh, the most used social media platform in the world is, can anyone guess? Facebook. Facebook it is, with 2.9 million monthly active users across the world. Facebook. I feel like that would be higher. Monthly. Yeah, think about like just one time. Yeah, like once a month is all you need to become a monthly user. I feel like that number yeah. should be much higher. But think about all the old people. Yeah. Yeah. Like my mom spends half the month trying to figure out her Facebook password. <laughs> I don't talk and then to my maybe mom. She counts, maybe she counts as two users because she has two Facebooks. There you go. <laughs> because she forgot her password to one, so she made a new one. And then at some point, she forgot the password and username of that and ended up back on the old one. So, yeah, I got, I got, got two. Or they'll post, I'm sorry, I got hacked. Like, no, you just forgot your password, honey. <laughs> but, like, I, I don't talk to my mom. But yesterday, or not yesterday, but a couple of days ago, she sent me a Facebook message. Like, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. She sent me a message on it, so I know she's still trying to convince me to do stuff. I don't know. Now I kind of want to go check it out. I'll show it to you after we're done. <laughs> you can read it. I don't care. Um, Facebook go to class. <laughs> 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 Facebook's reign continues into 2023, but it doesn't stand alone. YouTube is hot on its heels, clocking in at 2.5 million monthly active users. I'm, I'm, in, that, I'm in that crowd. What is an active user on YouTube? Like, can you just, like, watch a video and that's considered active? Yeah. Or do you have to, like, Absolutely. post and subscribe and comment and that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, you just watch a video. I feel like it's just watching. I never, ever, literally, I only comment on videos if I have to comment to win something. Yeah. Same. Truth. Yeah. Unless you guys want so, to comment on ours, that'd be great, people. Maybe, we are maybe we are really videos? invested in YouTube. If you guys are listening, <laughs> we're super into YouTube. Super into it. <laughs> you know, I I was literally just telling my nephew today. He was like, "Hey, what do, what are you guys are uh, talking about today?" I was like, "I don't know because I just spent the last several hours dealing with my car, and I got home, and I ate, and I showered, and I just jumped on the podcast and read the notes as we we're going." Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> but like, you're this talking about YouTube. Fine. I'm like, I'm like, we have a we have a YouTube. We have we're on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know where we are outside of Instagram and TikTok. Like, we're everywhere, bro. I, we're everywhere. Yeah, we literally see, distribute I'm, everywhere. We used to have videos on TikTok like all the time, and Tim stopped doing that because I have a job. <laughs> he doesn't love us anymore. He has a job. Rude. I'm gonna send this you the videos, and you do it. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, Tim. We need to monetize our podcast. 
so that we can pay for that clip editing thing. Oh, yeah. And then we can make more money because that thing is posting our clips. Oh, yeah. Which brought to you by Squarespace. Right. <laughs> That's fine. Look, I don't care who's paying me. Just give me money. Are you trying money. to get your business <laughs> off the ground? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, Squarespace what sponsors, was the, What was the one we used to do? Anchor? Yeah, yeah. We had an ad for Anchor for a really long time. It, it and brought, I think it, it the brought whole time pennies we, on the dollar. The whole time, I think we made like $7 for, yeah. the, for a year worth of ads. Yeah, it was a bunch. real. Yeah, it was pretty low. Yeah, it, it was. It was not time. great. It was not great. Um, I mean, Anchor was great. We love Anchor because oh, it allows yeah. you to edit your podcast on the fly. You can do it from your phone or your computer. It's a great platform. It automatically posts your platform or your your podcast to different platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. But you know, we never really <laughs> look at that. I'm Sorry. impressed that you remember that so well. <laughs> But hey, they didn't are, are pay we, us uh, enough. Are we on Spotify? Yes. We are, but it's Spotify owns Anchor, and they basically just reabsorbed it. It's like, all right, it's called Spotify for podcasters. We are, so. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we're on all of your favorite I'm, podcasting platforms. I don't know. Apple Pods, Spot, uh, Spotify, Google Pod just expired, so it's not on that anymore. No, it's mm, not. yeah, I got an email from them about how it's it's going going away. Yeah. Anyways, people in the U.S. have an average of 7.1 social media accounts. That's interesting. I didn't realize there were more than seven social medias. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many of them out there. I'm on two. <laughs> but you got to think about two. Like, there's some in the U.K. that we're not even remotely aware of. And, like, Question, Europe in general. Do they consider dating apps social medias? Oh, that's a good question. Because, like, no, no, because I never go way up. Plenty so, of fish. You definitely got some social in there. <laughs> when I when I was on I'm dating on apps, farmers I had <laughs> three that I was using. Mm, more like two. I I had three, but I really used two because they're all terrible. And it really comes down to what interface do you want to make you suffer the most. Mm. So, I have a buddy yeah. of mine that's trying to get back out into the dating world, and I keep telling him to go on Bumble because it from my understanding, requires the least amount of effort. I've never been <laughs> no. on any of these dating sites. Bumble. I don't know. Okay. But Bumble, so, from my understanding, you make a profile, and then the woman has to message first. Yeah. However, you still have to craft your profile to be appealing, which is the hard well, you part. You have to do that for all of the dating sites. No but, no, but you have to be more appealing because you can't initiate contact. Yeah. So, like. So, and think about it this way. Women get like forty times more likes than men. Yeah, a thousand so percent. You, they so deserve you're them. Just men suck. A face. This, I mean, yes, this is true. <laughs> so you're a face in a sea of men, and you want to make your profile stand out. You can't have a fish picture because that's that's a red flag from the get go. So well, I don't uh, fish, so that's easy. Exactly. I, I think I might have one picture with a fish, and it's at an aquarium. <laughs> God. That's acceptable. Um, but yeah, God. it's like Bumble was the worst for me. Like statistically speaking, I think I got like four matches on Bumble the whole time I had it. Um, Tinder, I got the most matches, but Tinder is a sea of, it's a wide spectrum between low to high quality matches. So you don't know what you're getting until you're about an hour deep in the conversation. And then you're like, man, this is... It's been real. It's been real. <laughs> well, and then I mean, you stop responding. Well, I, I feel then, like that's the same thing as like going to a bar though. Uh, yeah, I would say Tinder is definitely the closest to you going to a bar. And then Hinge is like you went to a social event that's like maybe tied to like one of your interests and you met somebody there. Ooh, okay. So that's kind of like how, how I would categorize them. I met my it's girlfriend enough. on Tinder, which is funny because we both hated it. Um, but up. Hinge, I got more quality dates and met better people. Um, I just want you to know that I'm telling your girlfriend that, that you met better quality people <laughs> on Hinge. <laughs> oh, my God. As an overall, he uh, knows this. We I don't know. talked about it. I don't know. It, it sounds like you're dogging your girlfriend, man. Nah, she listens to this podcast. I would never. <laughs> on the podcast that she listens to. On our private podcast for Patreon, she would have to pay for the information. 
Patreon. It's uh sixty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All nice. right, we got to move along, guys. We're we're gone on to too many rabbit trails, and we said we wouldn't. Uh, the you average... said we wouldn't. I said. We never agreed. <laughs> so that's on you to keep us on track. All right, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> the average person spends about 145 minutes on social media every day. Jeez. That's a hell of a lot of time, which actually makes sense if you consider, like, the things. Because, like, I mean, think about think about how many videos you watch on the Internet all day. Like three. I mean, think about how much you're on social media doing your work day. Because uh, yeah. if we're going to include Reddit, man, <laughs> today I got a lot. I got a lot. Oh, I, Reddit, I I feel like I need yeah. to switch jobs to what y'all are doing because I don't have that much time. Hey, I either have all the time or I have none of the time. There's no in between. So I just never have any of the time. Toilets. Um, time is a precious commodity, so it's significant that the average person globally spends a significant portion of their day, about 145 minutes on social media. Interestingly, Americans fall slightly below this average, clocking in at two hours and seven minutes daily. Did not expect that. No, very interesting. Uh, to put this into perspective, if the average person maintained this usage over an average lifespan of 73 years, the end result is an astonishing 5.7 years spent on social media platforms. Well, that's kind of depressing. Worth it. It's true. There's a lot of joy in it. I'm okay with it. Yeah. It's something for some people. It's not like, I think social media gets a bad rap or it's like, oh, you're just like rotting your brain or whatever. But like for some of us, it's like how we keep in contact with people. Yeah. If you have a lot of conversations, it's how you learn a lot of things. Seriously, all the car repairs I've done in the past month, don't get me started. I could do a whole (laughs) episode. Yeah. Um, But, uh, but no, for real though, like that's why I keep in contact with a lot of people from, my childhood and whatever, like, honestly, within the past month, I think I've had two people who I hadn't talked to in years, like just reach out to me just randomly. Cause it's like, Oh, Hey, you're in the social media and just catching up and seeing what happened in the last like eight years since we last saw each other. It's wild. It is. I sent Janelle a picture today from somebody's Facebook that it was like, uh, a woman posted that some guy checks in with her periodically just to see if she's still in a relationship. Oh. And she posted the screenshot, and he was like, hey, this is your biannual check-in. Oh, yeah. Still married? <laughs> and she was, like, locked in, and he's like, heartbreaking as usual. Have a great day. <laughs> I feel that. Honestly, that's pretty hilarious. I wouldn't even be mad. <laughs> Thanks for checking in, but, yeah, I'm still. Yeah. Like, still happy. Sounds great. Have a good one. I'll check in in a few months. Uh, Janelle gets those messages all the time, which is why I sent it to her. <laughs> like some random guy she went to high school with is just like, hey, how's it going? Still married, man. All right. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Last thing. Uh, We've got about 10 minutes left here. The country where people spend the most average, uh, did I say that right? The most average hours on social media is, can anyone guess? Indonesia. Justin? I would say Japan. China. Japan. Nigeria. Oh, that makes sense. There's a lot of princes there that need help with their bank account. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it tops the global charts and social media use with its citizens averaging more than four hours a day on social networks, far surpassing the global daily average of two hours and 27 minutes. Other emerging markets with youthful demographics such as the Philippines and India also show high engagement levels, highlighting the importance of demographic and regional considerations when planning social media campaigns. Smart. All right, guys, let's get to the question of the day. Is TikTok going to fall in the U.S. since we kind of clarified that worldwide, obviously? but in no. the- Absolutely not. No, I don't think so. And let, me, and, let, and let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Okay, here we go. So what's going to happen is we got this bill. Assuming it even passes its next round of people, which there's been a lot of people being like, hey, we have First Amendment concerns here. Um, the appeals and the legal challenges are going to go on for decades a year or two um and at which point it'll either be dropped or in the event that it does go through then that still gives another window and then there's going to be new legal challenges that's going to go on on top of whatever's going on there and then we're going to go to war of china and then and it's going to be world war four at that point and we'll all be dead here's so the thing fine. here's the thing <laughs> china does not own tiktok no, it and really I doesn't. don't know why it's so hard for the senators to understand that. And because the representatives. they're 80. They're 80. They don't know shit. They're 80. But like, 
Yeah. We're telling them. It, it's just they refuse to believe it. Like that Dude's interview. The interview he's a member yeah, of the CCP. The like, interview was I mean, hilarious to me because they were like, are you part of the Chinese uh, socialist government? He's like, Senator, I'm Singaporean. <laughs> I have <laughs> like, a passport. <laughs> the whole time. He's like, that. it's a different country. It's not China. I don't. I don't live there. They hey don't man, have you know, any. You know, races all white dudes, all Asia's China, you know. Also, fun fact, most people that own stock in TikTok, because it is a publicly traded thing. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Are American. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't just be like him having to. They're, like, private, it. they're it, private owners in America. Yeah. That have bought stock That's in wild. TikTok. That's wild. Hey, but you know, that means that the CCP can get our data. I mean, never mind. You mean that, like, like from Facebook? Facebook? And TikTok and Instagram. Or and literally Reddit. anything like government all leaks. Of our data. Banks, oh, banks I mean, have leaked our information, which is way more dangerous here. than yeah. social media leaking our info. But so, like for real, if you look at the ads you get on the internet and you're like, I was just talking about that. Is my phone listening to me? Yes. No, your phone <laughs> isn't listening to you. Your data oh. footprint is that messed up. It's that creepy. You're like, man, I really should get some toilet paper. And then you, you get an ad for toilet paper. You're like, it was listening to me. No, because all of your different loyalty cards and whatever, they're all going to, like, companies buy up all this data. And, and it like, shows oh. you how often you're buying toilet paper, and it makes that exactly. decision, like, hey, he's going to need toilet paper soon. So you're like, I need to buy some toilet paper. I'm running low. And it's like, hey, we see you've been buying toilet paper at this interval. Mm. Some toilet paper ads. That's why sometimes I don't use toilet now? paper. <laughs> I, I try to make the system guess. Because <laughs> like sometimes it's like, hey, you need toilet paper soon. I'm like, nope, not even close. But yeah, it's like every time you go to Walgreens and you put in your phone number to get your little rewards points oh, or yeah. any of those stores, all of your purchases, all that data is sold. And people don't so, realize that. that that's yeah, what kills people me. Don't like, realize it. They think that China is this big consumer information purchasing country and they're using it to spread communism. China doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> it's American stores and companies that are buying your info from American stores and companies. Well, what's so funny about all this too, and I'll, I'll say this very quickly, like I would understand if it was like Russia or like some other country where we weren't so financially tied with, but China and America are so intertangled financially that it's like, it would be a disaster if America were to somehow dissolve or like civil war or whatever, like people think China's trying to do to America. It would ruin China. It would financially destroy them in the same way it would destroy us if China just 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 crumbled. It's just like think think two steps ahead here. Like think about what you're saying in this instant. This would destroy everyone. It is literally all based on xenophobia. <sighs> it has nothing to do with who is an actual threat to us because we are still funneling money to Israel. Yeah. They are a huge Yay, threat to the United States. Genocide. They're committing a genocide at the moment, and we are still funneling money to them like it's our job. But That's, everybody's yeah. like, well, we need to be careful with China and Russia. They, they don't care about us right now. Russia's got I mean, its own I mean, deal with the Ukraine, and China, like, they can't take us down because they need us right now. I will say Russia does care about us a lot. And I mean, they care about us, but doing, they're not going to do still anything. They're doing their, their shenanigans. Yeah. yeah, they're not going to do anything about us. Yeah. Hopefully. But yeah, no, I agree. TikTok, TikTok isn't the problem. TikTok isn't going anywhere. And I feel like TikTok will continue to face challenges as long as it is, as it is used by younger people, even though we're and not that, feeling all that young anymore. That's the problem. The United States is worried about what TikTok is doing for the citizens that live here because we're getting all of the information, all of the news, all of the updates. People are doing deep dives into particular politicians, and those politicians don't like that. It's bringing more information to light to the public than the government is comfortable with, yeah. and I think that's why they're trying to shut TikTok down. They don't care that China may or may not have something to do with TikTok. It truly does not matter to them for that. It's that there are a lot of like young politicians that are a little more left leaning that are gaining a lot of momentum on TikTok and they're replacing the older people. And people are seeing like, oh, this third party may have more of a chance than I thought. So they're not giving their votes to 
one of the two main parties, and that's really worrying them. Yeah. Final question Facts. of the night, guys, and we got to close this main segment up. Favorite current social media platform, and maybe one of the past. We got to do this quick. So, lightning round, Chris. TikTok is my current favorite. MySpace is my number one. Yeah. Justin. Number 10 on the list, number one in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to go with Reddit or TikTok. Um, TikTok entertains me endlessly. Reddit educates me. Um, lots, lots of, uh, I've been doing a lot of my own mechanical work and Reddit's been very helpful. Um, and of the past, definitely MySpace. You know how many bands I found on MySpace? Seriously, what, like my man. whole life has so been underrated. altered by MySpace for the best. Man, not, I, not for the better, for the best. I miss Tom. <laughs> We yes, didn't appreciate agreed. Tom enough. <laughs> we didn't appreciate him enough. Tom, if you're listening to this, I love you. Come back. <laughs> uh, Justin, I wrote that exactly in my notes. TikTok or Reddit is my favorite. Those are my go-tos. And then, yeah, MySpace. It just, the top eight held my heart. I heard I heard somewhere uh, a bunch of people are getting together, and they said if TikTok does get shut down, we're all going back to MySpace. I, I'm, out, I'm in. I'm in. I'll be there. I'll see you guys there. Let's do it. <laughs> right there. Uh, all right, guys, uh, that's going to wrap up our main segment. But, guys, do not go anywhere. I say some really good, juicy fan questions, equations, questions, and some good questions. <laughs> and some fan good questions. what ifs. Stick around. We'll be right back, guys. All right, everyone, welcome back. We're going to wrap up this show with a few fun segments. Uh, first off, we, uh, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, we have uh, many ways uh, to listen to your questions and your requests and all your fun things. And so we're going to start off our uh, last part of the pod with a little fan questions. We've got a lot, of, a lot of ways. If you'd like to just comment on our social media platforms, direct message us, email us, pigeon, however you want to do it, guys, we will take your questions. If you send me a pigeon... It is never going to be in my thought process. Maybe that pigeon's got a note tied to its leg. I'm just going to be like, oh, look, a pigeon, and then go about my day. <laughs> uh, Maria asked, why are men more emotional than women but are afraid to show it? This is both a good time to ask and a bad time to ask this question. We might have to ask this when women are back on the show, but I guess we're men, so I guess we can kind of answer this. I'll answer it for you. I, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. We're not afraid to show our emotions. We don't know how to process our emotions. Women answer. are considered emotional because they can process and display multiple emotions. Men have like two emotions. It's either happiness or anger. And yeah. we funnel everything through one of those two. And I feel like if a man cries, he's not a man. Right. Yeah, I feel like we have the same amount of emotions as women, but because we only have the two outlets, it makes it seem like we're more, more emotional. Mm -hmm. But then we try to gaslight and turn that around on women because they have multiple outlets for their emotions to make them seem more emotional. Yeah. But like if you offer a man a grilled cheese and you burn it, he gets unreasonably angry. <laughs> If you tell a man, like, hey, man, I love you, and if he's not comfortable with himself, he gets mad at you for that <laughs> because he doesn't know how to process right. it. Right. It's, it's a weird, like, catch-22 where we have the same amount of emotions, but because we don't know how to process them, we, like, bottle them up until they pop. Yeah. I, I feel like that actually – go ahead, Justin. Oh, I was going to say that actually kind of reminds me. I saw a TikTok uh, today where someone was talking about, you know, the kind of men that they like. And, you know, someone was like, yeah, it's like the kind of guy who like loves a woman the way a lesbian does. And I was like, damn. I want to be honest it's with like, you. I model how I treat Janelle after a lesbian's relationships. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm like halfway real, between lesbians and hoser. Yeah, but it's like so many men just aren't emotionally healthy enough to to really 
express their emotions well. It takes a lot of work to get there, and most men don't want to put in the time and yeah. effort. There, there, yeah, there's yeah. a sense of vulnerability, too, that men aren't willing to undergo because they've been trained not to. It's, it's like this. Because of the patriarchy. Well, right. It's like there's this circular thing that happens where it's like don't show your emotions because or don't be vulnerable because you don't know who's going to hurt you. And it's like, yeah, but you don't know who's going to hurt you until you become vulnerable with other people. You don't know who can accept those emotions and accept those things. And so, by the way, I, I, I sent a TikTok to you today. Did you see it, Chris? I haven't watched. Are you are you guys okay if I share a quick uh, a quick t- TikTok clip? It's actually relating to this. You guys are good with that? I'm good with Go it. Go for it. All right, here we go. Wait, is it going to play? It's not going to play, is it? Hold on. Oh, wait. Hold on. It was muted. It was muted. I think women's friendships are amazing. Y'all could be out on the town like tonight, having a good time, laughing, drinking, just living it up, having so much fun that y'all could just kiss. And the only thing you got to do to offset the tension is be like, <laughs> that was crazy. This is not my <laughs> That's it. And y'all are back dancing like nothing happened. <laughs> I want to be watching a football game. Be like, oh, shit, touchdown, nigga. Come here. <laughs> Just be like, ooh, this is a good-ass game. They're playing some good-ass football out there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I used to live with two women. Their friendship was amazing, man. It was, it was immaculate. Like, one would break up with a boyfriend, run to the other one's room, lay on her stomach, on the bed, feet in the air, and they'd just talk about their boyfriend troubles all night long, laughing, crying, drinking. It was amazing. I want that, dude. I want to show up to my friend's doorway and be like, yo, open up. Tisha tripping, you know? And he just comes to the door like, Psh, nigga, get in this bed right now. <laughs> That's a friendship right there. Just dive into bed head first, belly down. No straight man in here has ever put their belly down in the best friend's bed, dog. You don't, you don't know. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Tim and I have done that. And we did that. That's exactly why I sent it to you. Because, like, <laughs> that we was had on, that, that friendship. That was on my FYP. Yes. Yes. I'm just like, I am extremely grateful to have a friend like you. Because it's like, there are times where I'm like, I just need comfort and I just need a hug. Yeah. And I can't do that with women. I mean, I can, but like, I don't have anyone that close. And so I have you and it's like, and I'll be honest, Justin, if you asked, I do it. I met you through this podcast, but I feel like we've bonded. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> I mean, it's just, but it's, it's so funny how it's like on one side of my brain, it's like, Wait, that's weird. I'm like, wait, why is that weird? Like, there's no reason for that to be weird. My thing is, and I use this in a lot of different aspects of my life, you are not your first reaction. Yeah. Your first reaction is what you've been conditioned to. Yeah, absolutely. And as men, we've all been conditioned that way. You are your second reaction, the one that says, hold on, that's not who I want to be, so I'm going to do this instead. That's who you are. Yeah. And that's always been our relationship, like, well, maybe we shouldn't do this because we're both guys. Hold on. Like, it's only gay if you make it gay. <laughs> and even if it is gay, like, that's not a problem. Yeah. Mo- and th- move and on. It, and I think that's also a part of it. It's like men are scared to, like, explore that part of themselves. It's like... Look, man, if you like a finger in your butt, you like a finger <laughs> in your butt. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you're, you're into what you're into. You can't help that. <laughs> yeah. Like, one of the, the funniest things i've ever seen in my life i laughed for like 40 minutes straight was somebody was debating with a queer person that i know and they were like well you know god is against being gay god is this and that being gay is an abomination it's a sin and they just said well then why is a male g-spot in your anus (laughs) you think god would put it there you think god does everything on purpose yeah he does so why is the male G-spot in the anus if you're not supposed to be gay? I mean, And the guy couldn't answer. He said, well, I mean, that's not true. It's, blah, blah, blah. it's absolutely true. And if you were gay, you would know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So to answer that question, uh, men are more emotional than women because we're stupid. Yeah. I'll accept it. Moving along, uh, Andrew, he asked, what's your favorite movie, and what do you think is the most well-made movie, and are they the same thing? This is a great question. I relate to this very much, because, like, I have my favorite movie, but it's definitely, it's not definitely the, I I don't think it's the most well-made movie ever. I think it's a really well, you know, I think it's good, and it's, it's, it is well-made, but it's not, like, 
a masterpiece as far as cinema is concerned. Sure. Yeah, that's that's hard. I don't know what I could say is the most well-made movie. Because there's a lot of well-made movies that I don't even think are good, but are made well. Yeah. Um, My oh. favorite movie is The Departed, actually. Ooh, good one. That is such a solid And that's movie. a well-made movie. That, that might be It like, is a well-made movie. That, that, that might be both. But, like, my favorite movies, and I can never pick just one, but, like, I love The Boondock Saints. I love A Knight's Tale. So good. They're both great movies, but they're not well-made movies. They could I don't been... know. I'd say The Boondock Saints is a well-made movie. That was pretty solid. Like, on a, on a tiny budget? Uh, yeah. Like, okay, for the budget that it had, it's a well-made movie. And, sure. that, was, and that was, a, that was a, a other issue I had. Like, well... Okay, so like for my favorite one is Interstellar, like that movie I just connect yeah. with. But like I wrote three different ones for like mess or best made because it's like it depends on the genre as well. Like I wrote The Godfather, 1917, and The Grand Budapest Hotel, and for all completely different reasons. Yeah, fair enough. Or like I would consider like Avengers Endgame as one of the most well made movies out there, but it's not one of my favorites. And that's because of like it was cast great the writing was pretty great the the build-up though would make it one of the best made movies because it was like what 15 years of superhero movies that all had to intertwine and the canon had to be the same and yeah everything had to work 24 movies yeah everything had to work for it to come together and it did and it did it well so i don't know that's a that's a good question though I feel like that could be a podcast episode in and of itself, maybe even a series. Mm. I'm not saying that I want to do a series, though, Tim. Don't tip me with the series, buddy. I know, buddy. I know. That, <laughs> that's why I said that. All right, guys. Uh, that was our fan questions. And I've been saving this next segment for a while because we actually the guys peeked at it last time we did this together, and I thought we would bring it back because they looked both really interested in it. So uh, it's a little time for some what if. So first question. What if anime had been created by a Spanish-speaking country instead of Japan. I'm going to go ahead and jump into this one first. There would be zero changes to Dragon Ball Z. 100%. (laughs) But like literally everything else would be at least a little bit different. I feel like... I don't think it would have caught on, in my opinion. If it was just from a Spanish-speaking country, I don't think it would have. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. In America, the because same way. For some reason, Americans view Asians as like on level, and anything they create is on level. But Hispanic people outside of Spain are like a tier below Americans. But Americans don't even really view like they look at Spain weird because they're like, you don't, you're not. Spanish. Yeah, they're not. They don't even consider them European. Well, it's like a completely separate Uh, thing. Okay, but the question in in this case, and we can nitpick here if we want to, but it does say Spanish speaking country. So you could equate most of like South American countries, Central America. That's that's what we're saying. Well, that's that's my point though. It's like if you say Spain, I don't see. I don't. It's not, and I, I mean this with all respect. It's not weird enough. But I feel like in like countries like Chile and uh and. I feel like it's it could catch on. I disagree entirely. Hmm. I, I I will say, growing up, and I don't know how much happened in like what is our age gap? Like four years, five years? Yeah, give or take. Um, I I don't know how much difference happened in that, but man, Telemundo, man, growing up, because you know I that have was cable. on my TV all the time, all the time. Yeah, yo, me and my brother used to watch random shit on Telemundo. We Por didn't understand eighty percent of it, but like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that's not even like that's so real. But um, I feel like if it was to come in some way like that, I feel like some people would be like, "Oh, yo, this 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 is tight," you know, like this looks great. Let's get into it. But I feel like a lot of early anime that like landed had a lot of like social commentary that mm. wouldn't have worked coming from this side of the world. Yep. Well, I feel like you bring up a great point because you have to consider, too, there is art and genre that are shared globally that is not always a hit in the U.S. 
And so there's things that might do exceedingly well, like 90% of 95% of their profits and their popularity is from the rest of the world. And it could be just as technically speaking as popular. Um, but it, because it's not in the U.S., we just don't recognize but it that way. Look, look at it like this. Soccer originated oh, 1, in Europe, but it, it's like the number one sport of literally every Spanish-speaking country out there. Yeah. It is just now starting to become a big thing in the States. Yeah. Well, that's my point. That's my point is like I feel like it, Spain is maybe an exception to this, but like if, if it was South American countries, I think they have enough culture and enough – like context, not context, but just culture. I guess it's the right word. They just have so much enrichment in its country and their in they, all that, that region no, of the world. They to absolutely where it could, do. It could catch on they just as absolutely much as do, in Japan. But because of xenophobia in the United States, for how much Americans disregard Hispanic speaking, uh, sorry, Spanish speaking countries. That's it. Sure, but we've had that same problem with 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 Asian countries as well. I mean, just look at the 1940s and how we looked at Japanese nope. people. And yeah, I, in the I, 40s, yes, in the 40s in that time period, absolutely. But now, Japan mm. Japan is the number one country for rebranding. If we're being honest, like you ask any kid nowadays about Germany, and they're going to be like, "Oh yeah, the country that did the Holocaust." But if you ask him about Japan, who was right there with Germany, they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, anime, Fortnite." Like, I don't know about that. We love Japan. No, but no, that 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 is real though. I feel like so many people don't associate Japan with the atrocities that happened in World War II, and they were worse. They were worse. I, I mean, mean, I wouldn't I, go and say worse. I don't know if I, mean, I would not, not draw a, a line no, there. No. I mean, like not on a number scale. J- Germany absolutely had numbers, but Japan's like. The research that they did, the human no, I'm aware, studies, but but it was worse. We're just not taught about it. Sure, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think South America has enough culture and enough tradition enough to carry something like anime along if it originated there. That's all I'm saying. I feel like it would be really big in those countries, but it would not be as big in the states because of xenophobia. I I can understand that. Maybe not in the U.S., but like globally except, again, except Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> there is not a single thing that would be changed about Dragon Ball Z. I don't know if you're Dragon aware of this, Z Tim. Might even be bigger if it came from a Spanish-speaking country. I don't know if you're because aware. Let of me this, tell you, but Dra- uh, uh, what Akira Toriyama recently passed, right? It really yeah. sucked, and people were start like they were doing deep dives into Dragon Ball Z, and it came out that out of the top ten countries that streamed Dragon Ball Z, Japan was number seven. It was like nine Hispanic countries and Japan. See, that's my point, though. No, that, no, no. They didn't create it. They just loved it. I know that, but the fact However, that they love it, but no, imagine no, no. if it was created But listen, it. the United States wasn't on the list is what I'm saying. Sure. But, but again, my, my point is not love U.S. here. the Japanese, but they don't love Hondurans and Guatemalans and yeah. Nicaraguans and Mexicans and... But but my premise isn't based on the U.S. popularity. It's based on global. I think a, a Spanish speaking, especially South American uh, or origin of anime would would dominate. Would would definitely be up there. Okay, would it blow your mind to know that Hispanic speaking countries, Spanish speaking countries, have made anime? Can you name one? No, exactly. But that's only because there's other other. Uh, there's other parts in the mixture. There's other, there's other, like, in, in this scenario, I'm imagining Japan did not have the start that it did. Like, it was, it was, it was maybe Argentina or, or Ecuador who started off first. And then Japan, like the Hispanic speaking country or the Spanish speaking countries, caught up in later. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. Next question. Next question. All right. <laughs> what if Her- Her- uh, Hercules. Was just some really cool ancient Greek wrestler, and his legend is just the ancient version of a Chuck Norris joke. If that were the case, I'd love that. I mean, honestly, this is probably what's going to happen with Chuck Norris. I mean, quite honestly. Like, a millennium from now, people are going to be, like, looking at, like, ancient history. I'm like, man, that's Chuck Norris. He, that guy, legendary. Yeah, have you heard the stories about Chuck Norris? Like, how about he, like, just put do push-ups and just, like, push the earth down? Come on now. Yeah, I see that happening. I kind of hope for that. 
I can see this. And then knowing that, it makes me want to write my own, like, Chris Ford jokes. <laughs> and try to pass those off. So somebody's Please like... Do. They're, they're not going to be like, oh, Chris Ford and Chuck Norris were on the same level. But maybe they'll be like, oh, yeah, Chris Ford was like a lesser Chuck <laughs> Norris. He was the Robin to the Batman. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. I'd be fine with that. It just means I live with longer Robin. in Valhalla. Uh, Dick, Dick. Dick Grayson? Yeah. Mm. Dick Grayson's better than Batman. Oh. I feel like I would be honest. If we're speaking honestly, Damn. I would be the Tim Drake. That's a hot, that's a hot, hot take there. Oh no no! I don't think that's even a hot take anymore. It, it's Dick not. Grayson is 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 a better person than Bruce Wayne. Wait, better person aspect. or a better like fighter and like you know, super an actual fighting probably not, but superhero yes absolutely. Mm, okay, he is a better leader. He is more inspiring, oh, okay. and he has the respect of everybody. So we're talking about Batman, morally. People just also uh, also they're yeah, like I, I, I he's agree Batman. With you there. I got he you there. Kill me there. Also, I got you. Have you seen his ass? <laughs> no. And his ass is legendary. Literally, when the world thought that Dick Grayson was dead, Midnighter was saw him as an agent of Spyro, where they got these little things that make their face impossible to see. And he's like, I will recognize that ass anywhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that's also how Barbara Gordon found out that he was alive. She saw his ass and she's like, mm, I've seen that in my bedroom. Har- Harley Quinn, too. <laughs> oh, my God. That's American. Like, but like ass. Midnighter and Barbara Gordon both actually happened in comics in our canon. So the ass is legendary. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right. Last one of the night, guys. What if Kal El, Superman, uh, was sent to Earth? Um, wait, did I swear that right? Uh huh. Sent, sent, sent to Earth, to the Earth, Earth of, Avatar, of Avatar, the last Ambender, and raised by Uncle Iroh. Iroh, after Iroh's son. Lieutenant. You don't have to read this, Chris, because I don't know how to read it. What if Kal El Superman <laughs> was sent to Earth of Avatar, the last airbender, and raised by Uncle Iroh after Iroh's son Luten died in the fault uh, sorry, in the failed siege of Ba Sing Se. So if Superman landed on Avatar the Last Airbender's Earth, mm-hmm. I feel like it would still be the same thing. The same he would as- still be he would still be the good person if he was raised by Iroh. Especially that he if he was were raised by Iroh. By raised by mom, Pa Kent. It's, this, it's the same upbringing. After, yeah. after Iroh lost his son in Ba Sing Se, he essentially became Ma and Pa Kent combined. I literally don't understand a single thing you guys are saying, but you guys if, are doing a If great I were job. going to pick parents for my life to be raised by, and you were like, hey, who would be your comic book parents? Ma and Pa Kent. Mm. Who would be your Avatar Last Airbender parents? Uncle Iroh. Just Thou- Iroh. Thousand percent. I don't even need a mom at that point. Uncle Iroh. <laughs> like, I don't think you understand. Zuko was the number one villain of Avatar Last Airbender. And he spent time with Uncle Iroh. Not once did Iroh ever make him feel bad about himself. Not once did he ever chastise him or try to push him down a path or anything like that. But Zuko still became the Avatar's best friend Mm. just from being around Iroh. He wasn't like guiding him. He was just like, hey, this is what I would do. Maybe this is a lesson you should remember. Maybe this is something you should think about. And then Zuko left him, like completely abandoned Iroh, and still came to the conclusion that maybe I should help the Avatar instead of being a villain. Mm. And then when he re-met up with Iroh later, he was like, hey, I'm so sorry, but it's important to me that you know I'm doing everything I can to make up for all the wrong. And then Iroh grabs him and hugs him, and he's like, I was never worried about how you would, like, about what you did. I was worried that you had lost your way. And I'm so glad that you didn't. That's Ma and Pa Kent right there. <laughs> so what you're telling me is I'm going to Discovery watch Avatar The Last Airbender and then just, yeah. Have you not? Um, I said rewatch. Okay, rewatch. Okay, I missed re-watch. the re. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. We're, no. we're fine then. I, I, we're, we're still good. We're, we're, I, I've done it three times, okay? You know. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm taking that hug back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, 
that that show is honestly top tier. Side note: Have you heard the theory about um, Zuko not knowing their names? Yeah, and that's my favorite thing. And I was like, that tracks. Like I had to go back through the episodes in my head. Yeah. I was like, yeah, no, he when he did he, actually join the Avatars team, he introduced himself. He's like, hey, Zuko here. And instead of them introducing themselves, they were all still pissed at him because he's been their biggest antagonist for the past two, three seasons. So they're like, what the hell? They never introduced themselves. So the joke is, like, through the entire rest of their relationship up until after the series ended, he didn't actually know any of their names. (laughs) Aang was just the Avatar. Toph was the blind earthbender. Katara and uh, Sokka were just the water tribe people. Like, he didn't know No, he knew Katara's name. And there's a scene where Katara is like, I won't let you hurt Aang. Like after oh, he, like, and then, like, like he turns them. and he's like, oh, that's his name. <laughs> and he, and he, he has this look of confusion on his face. Like who is Aang? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like, I mean, they did such a good job that show that like, I'm like, yeah, no, that totally tracks. Like, tracks. Yeah, no, we, it's great. We never said his name. I love Compared it. to like in Star Wars episode three, where Anakin says to uh Grievous, he's like, oh, you're, Taller than I expected. Oh, yeah. And then they're like, we have to clone more crap. We can't ever let them see each other. Yes. Ever. I love and so it. So it's like all of these, like, oh, you missed them by 30 seconds the whole way yes. through the series. Yes. Exactly that. They did that. I love Filoni for that. <laughs> uh, all right, gentlemen. Well, I thought that was uh, I thought that was good. Good good questions. Good what ifs. Fun times. Fun times. Fun times Fun all times. around. All right, guys. We're wrapping up the show. Any final thoughts to uh, end this episode? Um, uh, if you're not on TikTok, you should probably get on it and try to keep your for you page pretty diverse. Don't get sucked into like one side mm, of the algorithm. That's good. I I agree. And if you feel like your uh, TikTok page is uh, not diverse enough, just watch like seven videos in a row by some creator who's like wildly different. And all of a sudden, TikTok's going to think that you're like a mid-20s lesbian. And your For You page is going to be so much better. Bro. Speaking from experience. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Like, I've been on lesbian TikTok for much longer than I care to admit. And not like because I'm watching all these lesbian thirst traps. It's just like, again, the way I try to love Janelle is the way lesbians love each other. So, like, all yeah. the relationships and all of the advice and all that stuff, I'm like, oh, I love that. And then I'm on that side of TikTok. Well, honestly, like, I, it's almost like a it's some, someone for, like, me who's single. It's kind of like, it's it's like a great way to figure out, like, what, what kind of things do I need to be looking out for? Because, like, I haven't been in the game for a while. So now it's like, you know, what kind of things are women looking for? The women that I'm interested in, what are they looking for? So to me, yeah. it's kind of the same way. Like, like lesbians bisexuals like who like what are they thinking about men and like how 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 am i presenting myself in both my mannerisms my how i dress and all those things and so it's kind of like a yeah. i'm definitely on that side of tiktok i well, found you've an, been out of the game so long the game is a different game i know you're in a, you're I in a post-religious an, no. game i like, found an artist no. the other day that uh, her her post that popped up on my fyp was i make music for lesbians and i was like okay so this is not directly for me but maybe i'll enjoy the music and then she said and men with bi wife energy I was that, like, oh that's, that's I where i'm at yeah okay got it makes sense yep so See, if someone says i make music for lesbians i'm like i'm in like phoebe bridgers <laughs> because uh, uh let's go phoebe bridgers boy genius uh, what's her name? Julian uh, Baker, girl in Man. red. Yeah, yeah, I saw her. Great energy on stage. Yep, it was a giant stage. She opened for Taylor Swift, and it was like she was like five miles away. Also, I felt like she note, ran a mile in the one song she ran across the stage. Also, side note: social media is great for conspiracy theories, <sighs> like Gaylor. The fact that Taylor Swift might be actually gay. She was touring with Girl in Red. She was she's done a lot of real real questionable things. Yeah, stay off a conspiracy theory TikTok for <laughs> ev- the love of everything that's holy. Like, please, please don't. No, no, please no. Don't. There's there's enough time there's fun, in my work day. There's dealing fun with people conspiracy who think that theory. Conspiracy theories are real. No, there's fun conspiracy theory TikTok, and then there's like red pill real conspiracy, yeah. conspiracy TikTok. I, I find I myself on the people who debate those kind of people, and so I'm now on the side of flat Earth just because it's like 
it, it just it just naturally went that way. So now I, I follow people who debate people who are flat earthers and people who are like anti-evolution. And if you kind ever of, come to me and you're like, well, they have some good points, I'm going to punch no, you in the neck. No, 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 no. I, I will I have, not, I not the face. I will punch you in the <laughs> neck. No. And, hey, you know, it, it's, it's hard. It's a hard conversation for someone like me to navigate. Um, love the dude. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't. I for, can't. For me, can't. the love is gone. I know. You become a flat earther, like <laughs> I can't. I lost. physically cannot love you anymore. That's it. I, I had a, I had a coworker <laughs> just the other day saying, you know, that the moon landing wasn't real because it didn't make any sense and all this other stuff. And I was just like, so what you're saying is, you're just not educated enough to understand how it worked. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's so wild to me. Like I know. Have you not seen hidden figures? <laughs> Because I will be <laughs> damned if I let you take that success away from black women. <laughs> it's just, it's, it is absolutely wild to me just to see the overlap, what the Venn diagram of people who think the earth is flat and the people who think that uh, the, the government is, is sending airplanes, is putting chemicals in airplanes to... Chemtrails, put, yes, yeah. It is, it is an overlap. It is close. It's a circle. It is. <laughs> it's the pretty Venn diagram da- is it, a circle. It's basically like the eclipse that we're getting next month. It's pretty damn close, which, by the way, you wouldn't be able to see if there was flat. And so, uh, anything else, guys, before we close up the show? No, I'm straight. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is uh, I feel like now that we've brought it up, we got to... We should have an episode where we kind of talk about some uh, conspiracies. We've done that before. We need to bring it back. I'm down. Yeah. Because when and we, we did it last Jordan, it was just Jordan's, Tim Jordan's, oh, Jordan yeah. is uh He's a conspiracy theory guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, those guys, if I'm not mistaken, and they can, they can correct me next time they're on the pod, they don't believe in the moon landing. And I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't, I mean, obviously I don't think it's true, but... In that aspect, I'm like, okay, at least there's a realm of possibility there. Here's my thing. If we're talking conspiracy theories about the moon landing, my favorite is not that the moon landing didn't happen. It's that it happened, and they found life there (laughs) that told them not to come back. (laughs) Interesting. Have you seen Apollo 18? Oh, God. All right, we're done here. (laughs) Watch that movie, Justin. Watch Apollo 18. That'll be my Wreck and Rev next time. <laughs> We're done here. All right, guys. Thank you all again for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a rating on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, and Facebook at Always More Pod. Chris, where can we find you? I am on TikTok as Christopher.Lionheart and Instagram as Captain underscore CT Ford. Justin, how about you? I am literally everywhere as Justin is bleh, as Justin <laughs> is theory. Um, that includes PlayStation, Xbox, at me, play Halo, play Hell Divers, you know, Ooh. whatever. Yes. Uh, and then you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at Timothy Blitty. It's L I E C H T Y. Thank you all again for listening and for being a part of the conversation. And remember, there's always more than this. Bye, everybody. Yes, this is up. <laughs>